All right, and welcome to the uh, second control panel video here. Uh, this time we're going to look at the Counter-Strike Source game. There's a couple little differences, namely the add-ons and the maps tabs on this one, but we'll still go over all the basic control panel features. Um, we're looking at the first tab now after logging in, where you can see that uh, what the server is that you're looking at, that it's Counter-Strike Source, what the IP import is, the server name, and the map that it's playing on. You can also see the number of players and the status of the server. You've got an FTP link there in case you want to manage files and get to it that way. And a launch Steam and Play Now link for connecting to the server right away and going to play. And if we look at HLSW, all this information is duplicated. So we're looking at the demo CSS server on here. Dust, 16 players, and uh, Counter-Strike Source the same port, same information you get there. And for instance, if we wanted to stop the server, we can click on the stop button here and then hit yes. Let me just wait for the progress bar there. And that's all done. And the server's down. And if we want to bring it back up, we just hit start and yes. And then again, wait for a little bit. Okay, click on OK there, and the server is back up and running. Now, we also have a restart button that basically does this and then this, so you can do it all in one step if you've just installed some add-ons that you want to use, and you don't want to have to hit both buttons, you can just hit restart and get it all done that way. We have a patch button, so if we've downloaded the same updates from Steam that you have, you can hit patch and will automatically shut your server down for a moment, copy over all the files to patch it and bring it up to the latest version, and it's all set. No worries about being out of date and waiting for us to get that up to date for you. Uh, we also have a reinstall button. Uh, I, won't, I won't display how either of these work during the tutorial just because of the amount of time they would take. However, reinstall will bring the server back to its very default first configuration. So if you installed some adding on, you can hit reinstall and it brings the server back fresh to exactly how it was when you originally bought it. And if we move along to the config tab, we can see some various things here. We can work on the command line, for instance, for the server. So for Counter-Strike, there aren't too many for too much for options. We can change the default map here. Let's say we wanted to play Italy instead. We can hit apply there. And the server is going to change the command line and restart. And when it comes back up, we should be able to check in HLSW and in the control tab and see that the map has been changed to CS Italy. Okay, so that's all done. Let's take a look at the control tab and refresh. Okay, we're now on CS Italy. And HLSW confirms that as well. Now let's take a look at some of the other config options here. So we have the simple interface configuration. This changes server.cfg, but gives you kind of a web interface to take a look and change those things. So let's name this UGH demo CSS control panel. Let's put a join password on of 1234. And we'll allow file downloads of 64 megabytes to be directly downloaded. All talk's always a good thing. Uh, next map, how about 45 minutes on each map and then change to the next one, and let's enable flashlights too, why not? So let's hit apply on that, and yes. And a couple minutes later, actually it should only be a few seconds later, the server will be up to date with the new configuration, and it will restart and have those items set. So we can hit OK there, and on the control panel, we refresh again, and the server name will have changed. The map is still the same, player is still the same. However, all those variables will have changed. And if we go down here to the server configuration advanced, now it looks like it did before because it hasn't been refreshed. If we refresh, now we see that all those values that we wanted have been populated. And if we look at it in HLSW, you can see there's a password on it now. And if we ran, say, the net max file size command, 
Oops, pardon me there. Forgot to put in the Archon password for this one. There we go. Now we should be able to run that. There it is. So now it's 64 megabytes for file size. Now, let's say if you didn't have HLSW installed or you don't want to bother with it, but you still want to be able to run this console command, well, you can go over here to the Archon tab, and here you are. As long as the Archon password matches here with what is set up here in your server configuration, you'll be able to send Archon commands like that max file size to the server. It's a slight bigger delay than HLSW, however, given that you don't have to install anything to use this, I find it pretty handy. And you can send any of the, the usual Archon commands you'd use, you just don't want to put Archon in front of them because you have direct access here, so you want to send them exactly that way. You can get a status command there, for instance, and clear it out, and you can copy and paste out of here if you want to as well. And if you need some help with it, there's a link to a tutorial here for that. Uh, as far as maps go on the server, on this tab you can change the map cycle file. So for instance, we have the default map cycle file has these maps in this order, but let's say we wanted the server to only cycle through Dust2 and Office. Well, we can take this map, Dust2, out of the excluded maps, put it into the cycle, and we can remove everything else just by dragging and dropping. And if we scroll down a bit, we can apply these changes. And now this server, every 45 minutes, will switch from Dust2 to Office and back again. Okay, so that is all set. We also have the ability to upload maps here. So you can see a list of the maps that are currently installed and you can pick files off your computer to upload. And um, It's basically the same as uploading videos to YouTube or uploading images online. You click browse, you go on your computer, find the .bsp file for your map and click upload and away you go. And after that, when you refresh, it will show up in this list as well. And you can move it around from the cycle file. You can also change it here in the command line for the default map. So let's say, you know, if we want to make that CS Office now, we can apply that change as well. And this way we've got our Office and Dust2 server kind of set up there. And now we're started up on CS Office by default. And the add-ons. Right now all we have available for Counter-Strike is Source Mod and Metamod Source, and it's just this easy. You find your Steam ID. We have a tutorial. If you click on Steam ID here, you can see where to get it from. And you just put your Steam ID into there, check the box, click on Apply, click Yes. The server's shut down. Source mod and metamod are automatically installed when your Steam ID is given the root admin access to it. And just give it a minute to finish that up. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut the video a little bit there. That was about a minute, but uh, so we don't have to keep you waiting that whole time. I've gone and cut the video to make it easier. So that's done. We have source mod installed now, and we can check out in HLSW. You can see now the add-ons, metamod, and source mod are installed, ready to go, and the server's up and running. So let's go in-game and see how that works. So I'm going to go over here and just launch Steam and play now. I'll go ahead and put in the password that we set, 1234, connect. I'll go ahead and launch Counter-Strike, and I'll try to move this so you can see it a little better. That should do okay. All right, so we are on the server. Things are running. We're on Office. And I can go ahead and hit X here and bring up the admin menu because source mod's installed. And I'll go ahead and knock myself down there. Perfect. And we can also do the server commands, anything that's available within it. So if we're tired of Office, we can go right over to Dust2. So 
So having those admin plugins really helps kind of simplify the process for you for what you're doing on the server. So that about does it for this tutorial. Um, 